Hi guys, welcome back. We are doing another Bible reading today because it is Wednesday, third day of our week for our Bible reading. We are continuing in Exodus um, on chapter 4, verses 18 through 31. So this is called Moses Returns to Egypt. Moses went back to his father-in-law Jethro and said to him, Please let me go back to my kindred, kindred in Egypt and see whether they are still living. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. The Lord said to Moses in Midian, Go back to Egypt, for all those who were seeking your life are dead. So Moses took his wife and his sons, put them on a donkey, and went back to the land of Egypt. And Moses carried the staff of God in his hand. And the Lord said to Moses, When you go back to Egypt, see that you perform before Pharaoh all the wonders that I have put in your power, but I will harden his heart so that he will not let the people go. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, Israel is my firstborn son. I said to you, Let my son go, that he may worship me. But you refused to let him go. Now I will kill your firstborn son. On the way, at a place where they spent the night, the Lord met him and tried to kill him. But Zipporah took a flint and cut off her son's foreskin and touched Moses' feet with it and said, Truly you are a bridegroom of blood to me. So he let him alone. It was then she said, A bridegroom of blood by circumcision. The Lord said to Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. So he went, and he met him at the mountain of God and kissed him. Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord with which he had sent him, and all the signs with which he had charged him. Then Moses and Aaron went and assembled all the elders of the Israelites. Aaron spoke all the words that the Lord had spoken to Moses and performed the signs in the sight of the people. The people believed, and when they heard that the Lord had given heed to the Israelites and that he had seen their misery, they bowed down and worshipped. Okay, this was a lot of information. Let's talk about it. Moses basically gets his family together and goes back to Egypt with his family. Um, and we learned that Jethro told, tells Moses to go in peace, um, which is his father-in-law, and he knows this plan of what's going on. Um, so they, he takes his kids and his wife and they go to Egypt with the staff that we learned about um, yesterday with God, um, the staff that God gave him that turns into a snake as a thing to show the Israelites that he is sent from God um, to do this to help them. And then he goes to Egypt and he's going to do all these things that God told him to do and show Pharaoh. But God said that he's going to make Pharaoh, um, his heart is going to be hard. So he's not going, the Pharaoh is not going to listen to um, Moses, which I don't understand why God would make Pharaoh not listen to Moses, because then maybe it could be solved. So, but I don't know. God had a plan, and he wanted Pharaoh to not let him do, not, not give up easily, I guess. Because it says, then you shall say to Pharaoh, thus says the Lord, Israel is my firstborn son. I said to you, let my son go that he may worship me. But you refuse to let him go. Now I will kill your firstborn son. So God has a plan that his firstborn son, um, Pharaoh's firstborn son needs to die because of the Pharaoh's rule and all of that. And I guess that will help end it, which is God's way. And I guess whatever God says Whatever God says will happen, and it should happen according to what God says and what his plan is for people on the earth. So we learn about that. It's a little confusing, but it's just God's way, and that's how it's going to be. And then they basically are traveling to Egypt, and it says the Lord met him and tried to kill him. So don't know why. Tried to kill him. But he did. It says... Okay. I see here. So basically the Lord tried to kill him because his son was not circumcised. Which, going back all the way to the beginning in Genesis, it says that if you're not, um, if boys are not circumcised, then the 
thank God doesn't see him as one of his people. And it says God told his people to get the boys circumcised um, as quickly as they are born when possible because that is how he will determine who his people are, um, for the boys at least. So that's why God tried to kill him because he didn't realize that he was actually a person that is of interest to God, I guess. So we learn about that and then he gets circumcised and then everything's better, basically. It's a little confusing. It's going all over the place with this story, but that's what I'm seeing from it. Please comment whatever, um, if you want to add to this opinion or whatever you want to say. Um, always be nice with your comments as well, but you can always add on if you feel like you have something to say to add along with the story that I am reading. So then they meet Aaron and they go into the wilderness and they basically, um, Moses and Aaron are talking about the plan of what God wants and getting the words into Aaron's mouth to be able to speak for Moses because Moses is still not great at speaking to the Israelites. So Moses is getting ready for that and Moses tells the people, or not Moses, <laughs> Aaron tells the people about Moses and what the Lord said and that chain of what is supposed to be spoke to the Israelites and the Israelites believed Moses and Aaron that the Lord is with the Israelites and with these people and that Aaron and Moses are trying to help them. So the Israelites bow down and worship God and are basically thankful that he is going to help them. They don't know how yet, but he is going to help them. So that's where this leaves off. We'll figure out how exactly God is going to help the Israelites later on when we start chapter five tomorrow. But basically what I, what I want to say from the story is we've learned that God's way is going to happen no matter what. If you try to interfere, God's gonna find a way for his plan to happen. It will always happen the way that God wants it to happen because he's God and he rules over the entire universe and he controls what happens. So that's just how it works um, in my opinion. And according to the Bible, that is God's plan and God's plan will, will happen no matter what you try to do to not because no one is powerful. No one is more powerful than God. God is the most powerful and he created the universe and earth and everything. So he, he is everything and that's why we read the Bible. That's why we pray to him. That's why we do all these things to try to be closer to God, to try to understand him, to try to stay on his path for us so we can end up with him in heaven when we die. So we can try to follow the rules, try to do as best as we can. And when we do sin and make mistakes, we can pray and ask for forgiveness um, from Jesus from dying on that cross and taking our sins and we can ask for forgiveness. And when you ask for forgiveness, Jesus and God will forgive you and let you into heaven most of the time. So just saying all that, um, I hope you have a great rest of your day. We'll, we will talk tomorrow as always and start chapter five and see what happens with the Israelites and God and Moses and Aaron. And that's all I have for you today. Hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you guys tomorrow.